So recently I was asked a very interesting question that my Saturn is damaged. How do I heal my Saturn? Wow, very nice question. So what does it mean when you say that my Saturn is damaged or any planet rather? It simply means that you are not able to utilize the Karakatwas of that planet, which means the significations. So when you say Saturn is damaged, it can mean many things. It can mean that the traits of Saturn are not at all existing in you. Or maybe it's existing, but not to the extent that you wish for. All right. So today we will see in short, hopefully, about how to how to improve, how, how to heal our Saturn, all right? And we will also try to see what Saturn actually is. And there's a lot of fear mongering about Saturn, all right? So if you're new, then please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And yes, if you want a consultation from me regarding any area of your life, then you could always go down to the description section to my website. You will find it in the link of this, in the description section, okay? The link, I mean. All right, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and he will help you heal your Saturn. So now what what are the symptoms of a damaged? Uh, well, of course, I've made a video on uh, 10 signs, I guess, 10 signs, funny signs of an afflicted, debilitated Saturn. So you can watch that video if you wish. But today, in short, Saturn's damage the biggest indicator is you lack discipline in life that's the biggest indicator all right and yes there are some strong things which i will say my disclaimer <laughs> so if you do not like to hear strong things or many strong apparent <laughs> things which i say in my video sometimes then please walk away from this video you will not get sweet things here all right so that's the the disclaimer which i'm giving you in the beginning itself so there's no discipline basically but what saturn represents saturn actually represents your comfort zone oh my god what is it telling saturn is hardship saturn is pain saturn is discipline saturn is work how is saturn your comfort zone yes saturn represents the comfort zone not that comfort zone which you are thinking of. Saturn represents those things which you take shelter when you want to run away from things in life. I'm talking of that comfort zone. <laughs> I'm not talking of places like home or family or, you know, mother, father, husband, wife, where people go and take some good shelter, you know, okay, I'm back from the office, now I can relax. <laughs> or meeting friends, you know, I'm not talking of that shelter. But when you are defeated by something external or internal, your inability to cope up with that, when you see yourself being not, I won't say competent, but not able to handle failure, what do you do that time? That's what Saturn is. That is why Saturn is the Karaka for procrastination. Why? Because procrastination means what? Procrastination simply means you are not enough motivated to improve your life. That's, that's what procrastination is. Nothing more than that. So what do you do? Ask yourself, what, what do you do when you know that you should do something but still you are not doing it? It could be anything in areas of your health, career, relationships, money, finances, love life, spiritual life, my God, irrespective of that. What do you do that time? So when you come from the office and suppose you have some issue in the office, so what do you do after coming from the office? Write it down in the comments. Are you just trying to forget it by seeing something in the TV? Yes, 
television <laughs> are you just trying to see uh, things in youtube you know <laughs> game of thrones or you know you are just seeing things like you know crime patrol savdhan india yes or bollywood movies you know or you maybe you are watching pornography or any such uh, adult material or in worst case maybe you are visiting prostitutes yes you are wasting your human life for such petty things does that sound like somebody is that you or you are the other way around why entertainment we will go to the pub you know we will dance yeah dinka chika dinka chika <laughs> so these are ways by which you are going in that dreaded comfort zone that's all what saturn is have you ever thought why it represents hardships everybody says you know saturn is bad it's terrible it's the worst malefic it's correct the amount of suffering which saturn can give even rahu cannot give you that in fact rahu gives you obsession but after rahu comes saturn but have you asked why 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 because you have been going to the wrong places for shelter and that is where the things pile up as in hindi they say na in sanskrit you know paap ka ghada bhar gaya that is why saturn shows suffering because when you give suffering to somebody or when you give suffering to yourself by doing all these things then the repercussions are very high and that's what saturn represents all right so how to heal your saturn well it's very simple now if i say this you will say oh it's easier said than done see we all want shelter somewhere the living entity as the shrimad bhagavatam says you know is tathastha shakti which means it is in between living entity means the soul the atma chitta <laughs> tathastha shakti means either it has to be in the material energy or it has to be in the spiritual energy it cannot be in between there is nothing in between which means you cannot avoid taking shelter you will either take shelter in filthy disgusting material th- ha- uh, habits which denigrate your life which denigrate your consciousness which ruin your family life which ruin your career have you seen people drinking and beating their spouse i have seen that why because that's their comfort zone you know oh i feel good when i do that it is good for me or not that's not the question the question is how do i feel i feel a great sense of comfort in that that is why i keep doing it even if i know that will damage me that will ruin my entire life like recently one of my friend he called me and said you know that one of our school friends his age is how much maybe 27 28 or maybe 29 or maybe 26 around that age he is battling with cancer now and he is in the last stage final stage of cancer and he is not going to live much more and maybe now i am publishing this video if somebody is watching this video now now is you know end of june 2019 maybe somebody watches this video after 10 years june uh, 2000 you know 29 maybe that person is not there anymore and now he is busy collecting you know funds you know all of us we have given updates in all places well the point here is why this happened because he was heavily into drinking that's the reason 
So what is the ultimate solution? The ultimate solution is not that you stop drinking, which you eventually have to do, all, of course, without any doubt. But you cannot just artificially not drink and, you know, just do nothing and sit. That's not possible. You have to find shelter in a right place because I said the living entity is Tathastha Shakti. It is either in the spirit or it is in matter. It cannot be in between. So please do not artificially pretend that, you know, oh, I, uh, I am not into all these things. You know? I am above all this. No, it's not like that. So we have to find shelter in things which elevate our consciousness. Then that same shelter, that same comfort zone will take us way beyond our capacities and our capabilities and our strengths because then we will get divine empowerment. And where do we find that shelter? That shelter we have to find in God and doing spiritual activities. That's the only way you can heal your Saturn. Otherwise, you will continue to seek shelter in all these frivolous things. As Lord Krishna says in the Gita, these pleasures have a beginning and an end. Nate Shura Mate Buddha. Then you will see that your career has improved. Then you will see your family life has improved. Your married life has improved. Your relationship with your parents, your relationship with your son, your daughter, with your cousins, with your friends, with your colleagues, husband, wife, they have, these relationships have improved. Otherwise, if we continue to seek shelter in the material things, which, which is beyond the range of the scriptures then we will very soon realize that we have lost the battle the game of life is lost so what to do well it's very simple just do spiritual activities find shelter in spiritual activities find shelter in spiritual people find shelter in reading spiritual books find shelter in talking to spiritual people find shelter in eating the food which is offered to god that's known as prasad find shelter in sharing spiritual wisdom with others imagine if you start finding shelter in these things where will you be i mean <laughs> You cannot even understand now maybe where you will be. And when I say where you will be, it doesn't mean that you know you will become some yogi or something, you know, you, you will just disappear. No, no, it's not like that. You will stay as a normal person in this world and be so happy. Normal means you will have a job, you will have a family, you will have children. Normal. We are not talking of leaving everything and going to the forest. We are not talking of that. Alright. So when we start finding shelter. Then you will realize. That. Now you have the same comfort zone. But it's a divine comfort zone. It's not a comfort zone anymore. It's a delight zone. <laughs> You are not just comfortable there. Comfortable can mean that you know you are just being inert. There's nothing positive there. You are just peaceful there. It's negative. There's nothing negative about a comfort zone. That's what comfort zone is. But this is not a comfort zone. Spirituality is not merely a comfort zone. It is a divine zone. It's divinity. That's what the word is spiritual. One who is in contact with the spirit. And who is that spirit? You don't have to uh, make things so complicated. Lord Krishna says in the Gita, Ishwara Sarva Bhutanam Hridde Arjuna Tishthati I am situated in everybody's heart. Not yours, not mine. Everybody's heart he is situated. So irrespective of anything, 
you are married you have a job you have a business you are a hindu you are a christian or a muslim always remember that god is there in your heart so if we do activities by which we can transform our consciousness and find shelter in him and we have the greatest of the greatest examples from the scriptures i can give examples from the contemporary scenario also but you will not know those people so you might feel that oh about whom is he talking but let's talk from the scriptures about characters who you might have heard yes let's take the example of uh, shrimad bhagavatam the first you know five cantos what it is basically it's a discussion between the great mahatma vidur and the great sage maitreya rishi this conversation is told by sukhdev goswami to parikshit maharaj and in that assembly sud goswami uh, sud goswami sitting who later on goes to naimisharanya and says the these same stories to shonak rishi and the group of sages and who told this to sukhdev goswami well his father the great sage vyasdev who wrote all the scriptures so vidura found, found such great shelter he just forgot that there was just a fratricidal war in the battlefield of kurukshetra he just forgot <laughs> yes arjuna karpanya dosho pahataswa bhava what to do my <laughs> gandiva is slipping from my hand that arjuna which has even defeated you know the nimat kavachas yes he his gandiva was slipping down from his hand why because he was overwhelmed by emotion that how can i kill my grandfather <laughs> how can i kill my guru how can i kill my cousin brothers that duryodhan which who hatched so many evil schemes so many controversies against the pandavas they insulted them they insulted their wife draupadi and arjuna tells that oh, duryodhan is bad i know but ultimately he is my brother you know <laughs> he was so emotional that time and where did he take shelter he took shelter in lord krishna the same example is of draupadi she was running to everybody please protect me protect me He, she was running to the king ritarashtra please protect me she was running to everybody in the assembly but nobody protected her even those who tried their efforts all in vain where did shabri found find shelter shabri she is the great lady from ramayan she found the shelter in the great sage matang rishi and his disciples and when matang rishi went back to the spiritual world he told her that you will have a special service to do you will have to wait till lord ram and lakshman comes here in search of sita devi yes and then finally that day came when shabri saw lord ram and lakshman interesting <laughs> everybody all the characters all the divine characters we have the example of yudhishthir maharaj how he found great shelter in lord krishna such amazing conversations between bhishma pitama and yudhishthir maharaj two of the greatest personalities in the mahabharat apart from lord krishna of course <laughs> we have the example of pralad maharaj who found such great shelter in lord narsimha dev that can you imagine for him just for this 5 year old boy just this 5 year old boy lord vishnu took an incarnation and he came out of the pillar my god and he came as a half man and a half lion and he ripped apart the intestines of hiranyakashipu so pralad found such great shelter in lord narsingadev 
so that's not a comfort zone it's a divine zone actually so if we can also take shelter in this divine zone or you could call it comfort zone <laughs> whichever you like then our lives will also become like these divine personalities to to the extent that we can of course we cannot be like them but there's a saying you know mahajano gata yena gata sapanta which means we should try to follow in the footsteps of the mahajans not to we should not try to imitate them all right so following the footsteps means at our level whatever is possible we try to do that and then irrespective of your circumstances your upbringing your surroundings or externals you are a man or a woman you are a child you are a grown up you are old doesn't matter whoever you are you are from india you are from britain you are from united states you are from jerusalem you are from banaras you are from kanchipuram it doesn't matter you will all get the same benefit which though these personalities got if they can get we can also get all right god's grace is not only for the people who are sitting in the scriptures it's not for them only <laughs> it's for you me and everybody else all right so let us delve and delight in this divine spiritual wisdom by that we will realize that life can also be beautiful not just good have you seen people when they ask how are you they say oh i am good good doesn't mean necessarily they are saying that oh there is so much good things in my life but good simply means that oh there's nothing terrible in my life you know even if they are unhappy they are miserable but you know at least maybe they have some job you know they have a, they have a decent relationship with their husband or wife then they say you know oh, life is good that's not a good life that's a miserable wastage of your potential so please do not waste your human potential human life is very 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 precious and in the fifth canto rishabh dev who is one of the avatars of lord vishnu he says to the most esteemed of his sons bharat maharaj after whom india is named bharata the word bharata is what the land of bhaskara bha is bhaskara bhaskara is the light divine light india is the land of light divinity spiritual wisdom <laughs> he says to bharat maharaj tapo divyam putra kayena satvam wow have you read that part no just read it now it's there in the fifth canto of the shrimad bhagavatam all right go there straight and read so he says that do some tapasya tapo divyam tapasya is divyam it's divine putra kayena satvam my dear son <laughs> it will take you to the highest level of satva and that person is personality is so extraordinary that after him the entire holy land of india is named bharat maharaj can you believe it yes of course lord ram also has a brother bharat maharaj yes we all know <laughs> so there are many bharats but the essence is important it's not important after who india is named the point here is why is he so great because he followed the instructions given by his authorities his father especially rishabh dev okay so that is all i will say this is how you can improve your saturn and by taking shelter in right things then you will see your life has improved and your comfort zone which is filled with all the poisonous degraded material substances of this world is now becoming the divine zone it's not so next time when somebody asks you how are you don't say i am good you should say i am fantastic <laughs> all right so take a target two months i will finish the gita one year i will finish shrimad bhagavatam take a target fix a target every day 5 minutes i will talk about the gita with somebody 
or if you're a Christian you can talk about the Bible or if you're a Muslim you can talk about the Quran there's no restriction here this is not some sectarian uh, Hindu cult or something like that. it's not like that all right <laughs> so whichever religious tradition you are from just stick to that and you will attain enlightenment you will attain success or moksha or liberation or salvation or whatever is promised by that book you will attain provided that book is bona fide all right thank you very much and yes if you are new then please like comment share and subscribe and if you want a consultation from me then you could always go down to the description section to book a reading with me okay thank you very much god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him hopefully